Today we're ranking a bunch of AI tools and companies based on a coder's perspective. This entire thing is from my live stream. The full VOD will be in the description. And if you want to check me out live, I stream 1230 EST Monday to Thursday. Enjoy. I'm going to put Grok at a solid B tier. The reason it gets a B tier is because it doesn't really shine higher than anything other than image generation, which is surprising. You wouldn't expect it to be good at image generation. For chat, it's just like the basic same chat you would expect from any LLM. Research, it hallucinates quite a bit. I wouldn't trust it to do anything research based, but image generation, you can get some really crazy shit going on. Stuff that on the right chat GPT would sort of try and censor, you can get like some pretty crack shit from Grok. Like there's no other image platform you're able to generate stuff like this on. So Grok gets like a, it, it gets style points for that. And then finally for code, it's about a four. I don't know anyone that is using Grok for code. Honestly, you're probably using something like GPT, VO, uh, Cursor, Copilot, or Claude if you're doing code stuff. Next up we have Perplexity, which I'm a bit biased towards. Right off the bat, I'm giving research like a 9.5 out of 10 for Perplexity. It's the only platform that allows you to actually search things up and it sources to my knowledge, the only platform, it actually sources its facts. I know like maybe GPT does something similar, but this does it really well. How many letters at Fang companies are there to date in 2024? So it also shows you the train of thought, you know, the thing that like GPT's new model does, except it's been doing that for a while. So I asked it how many layoffs there were at Fang companies to date 2024 has sources for every single piece of data. So I'm not saying it'll never hallucinate. What I'm saying is you can at least go through the actual sources and understand why it's saying what it's saying. Also, it could do some really powerful stuff. For example, I'm starting a bakery in Toronto. Find the things people want the most from Google reviews and stuff from Toronto Bake curries and give me a table of things I can improve on. And you can see here, it's building an entire table. And if you go to one of the sources of the tables, it literally will cite Yelp reviews for some random bakery in Toronto and the things that I can improve on it. So you can see one review talks a lot about like ambience and stuff like that. So they went ahead and like added ambience in there. It can actually do stuff for you. Like you can task it with like researching competitors for your business and like doing all this like cool stuff. For research, it's a 9.5. For chat, I'd give it an eight. It's a bit more factual based and a bit more like pragmatic when it comes to chatting. So it's not like as quirky as some of the other chats. And for code, it's pretty decent too, but I wouldn't personally use it for code. I'm going to give it like the standard five for code. Uh, and for images, it's not available. But because it is so good at what it does, which is research, I find myself using perplexity on literally like a daily basis. It is like actually goaded. Perplexity is like S tier in my eyes. Next up, we have VO, which is a brand new player. And it's very specific in its use case, but that doesn't mean it can't be goaded. For VO off the bat, you're not using it for chat, you're not using it for research, and you're not using it for uh, for images. So when it comes to code, it has a very specific niche. There's a very specific use case that it covers, and that is creating front-end components almost explicitly with Tailwind UI and CSS. So the use case is extremely limited. However, when it works, it works really well, and it doesn't always work, but when it does, it's amazing. What I like to do is is for example, I will come into GPT and I'll be like, I'm making a pricing component and asking AI to code it. Give me a list of features that it should have that I can feed into my code generating AI, make it sleek, minimal, modern. Because VO takes in really like it, you really need to explicitly give it every little detail if you want things to be perfect. I will just describe what I'm looking for in a different LLM, so like GPT, and then I will paste this in straight into VO. And it's hit or miss. Sometimes it works amazing, sometimes it sucks. I don't know why the LLM capabilities under the hood for VO are so bad, but by far, it has the best UI. Like, look at this. It will write the code for you on the left side. And as soon as it starts rendering, it'll switch over to the preview. I don't know if you guys can see it. And it will start like showing you as it makes it. And if you pass in good prompts, it can make some amazing stuff. Like, look at this. That, this is pretty fucking nice. I would like implement this on my site. But the coolest feature, and I think the dude from Shatzian got hired by Versal to make this, the coolest feature that this has access to is the fact you can click this little terminal button up here once it's done. You gotta give it a little sec, right? Look at that, this is beautiful, right? You click this terminal feature, and if you have like a standard Next.js application, even if you don't, it will pretty much, you just copy this command, paste it into terminal, and all of this code is ready in your code base to go. When it works, like when it works, just like it worked right now, 
it is amazing. However, a lot of the times it doesn't work. And unless you are using like an another LLM to like prompt it and make it good, it doesn't work. Also, you can't really collaborate on the code and it doesn't do well with multiple files. So if you take this and try like asking it more stuff and ask it to improve on it and it runs into an error, you're fucked. Like you're done, right? You, you have to start all over again. A lot of the times I find myself starting chats over and over again for the same thing, but passing in different prompts. The only other weird thing I've seen about VO is that it will have like specific styles of things. So sometimes I'll pass in a completely different prompt for the same functionality and it will generate the exact same code twice in like two separate chats, which I, I don't know how it's how it does it or how it's like trained off its code. But when it works, it works really well. And this saves a ton of time. A lot of people have tried making full applications out of it. I have had the most success by just asking it to generate small components components as I go while I'm building an application. If I need a pricing tier list, I ask it for a pricing tier list I use in my app. If I need a nice login page, I ask it for a login page, it'll give it to me. If I need a nice header, so on and so forth. I don't ask it the big questions. In fact, I'm hardly asking. It's ChatGPT that's asking. But if you know how to use it, Vio can save you so much time when it comes to building stuff. And the fact that every other like code-based thing is absolutely garbage a UI, I'm giving Vio a nine. It is very niche. It's not going to be useful for everyone, but it is quite goaded. If it didn't have as many bugs and it worked more consistently and it actually was able to understand what you were talking about a lot easier, I would consider putting this like like high S tier with perplexity. But I think I'm putting it at like A plus to S minus tier for sure. Maybe, maybe S minus tier just because it has saved me so much fucking time. Let's talk about Claude. Chat for Claude. Nobody's using Claude for chat. Same with research, same for images. Let's talk about the code capabilities. Claude is very good at coding. It is very good at coding in the sense that a lot of people use it for code other than GPT, but it is not miles ahead. It will save you time and it's sort of like a flavor of the month thing. Like I sort of like Claude better when I'm doing some things, but chat GPT or Copilot better for when I'm doing other things. I'm going to give it an eight. It's like middle of the line when it comes to code. And I don't think it's in like this indefensible place either. I think O1 is sort of something that could potentially like dethrone Claude as like the go to de facto code AI. But to be fair, they do have a lot of functionalities like creating these graphs and stuff like that, which I have not tested, but I think the majority of people just use Claude like in cursor uh, to actually write code. So that's, I guess, what I'm basing it off of. And for that, I'm putting it in an A tier because it is useful, but if Claude were to disappear tomorrow, my life would only be like slightly worse. Whereas like if Grok were to disappear tomorrow, I wouldn't even notice. If Perplexity or VO were to disappear tomorrow, like I would noticeably feel the pain. What in the world is that image? This guy, this is this is what Elon Musk has architected into the world. So yeah, Copilot. They do use GPT 4.0 under the hood, apparently. The thing is, when it came out, it was like sort of revolutionary. Yeah, it wasn't the first like VO VS code extension in in like that used in LLM. And they did bully all the other like chat GPT wrapper VS code extensions out of the market. But for a long time, I depended on Copilot because it was a lot easier to ask Copilot to do things than it was to like go into my code, copy and paste what I want into GPT and get it to go. However, now that cursor exists, I don't think Copilot has many uses anymore. I think the people that are still using Copilot are the people that A, don't want to switch onto cursor or B, haven't heard of it. Cursor is just so much more integrated than Copilot. And yet Copilot has the functionality to do a bunch of different things like add multiple files and stuff like that. But a VS Code extension by nature can't get more integrated than cursor, which is like an entire IDE. And yes, Microsoft owns Copilot and VS Code, so they could theoretically in the future build it in. But for now, as of September 18th, 2024, I think if Copilot were to cease to exist, I probably wouldn't even notice it. I'm giving Copilot a solid like B minus. It was great when it was the only thing on the market. Now that we have cursor, I don't think we really need it. Cursor is honestly great. I've been using it for the past three weeks now, I think, and I have not regretted switching to it. The only thing is I feel like it's a bit more more clunky when I'm using AI than uh, VS Code like Copilot is. But if you have a MacBook, you could probably tough it through. Obviously, you don't use it to chat, research, or for images. For code, because it allows you to pick whatever model you want under the hood, it's great for people that have like model specific preferences. So I'm going to give Cursor a solid nine for coding. Uh, just because you get to choose what you want and it's integrated. Like I, it's so integrated. So many hockeys. I actively have been using Cursor instead of VS Code for the past like three weeks and I have not even noticed the difference because it is a fork of VS code. You can literally just have like, it looks the exact same as my VS code. Look at this. On one side is my VS code. On the other side is my cursor. Can you tell the difference? The answer is no, because it is a fork 
of VS Code and it allows you to import all your themes over and all your extensions. You literally don't feel like you're using anything different. You just get all the functionalities of AI cursor with the same feel of VS Code. Everything you liked and enjoyed and used from VS Code, you get with cursor. It's just a no brainer to switch. Like I have not even noticed that I've not been using VS Code. The only thing I don't like, and maybe there's a setting to like make this different, all these little icons for like, you know, like get differences in source control are at the top now. And sometimes it's confusing because I go looking for it on the left. That is it. But like you can click control I and it brings up this little like chat box that you can talk to. And like you can add all the files into context that you want. And I know like Copilot I think has like a similar feature, but it's just so intuitive here. Or you just control A, control K and tell it what you want it to do and it will do it using any model you want. You want to try O1 Mini or O1 Preview, the new GPT models, bam, it's all in here. And you get to choose like which ones you want. You can provide your API keys and stuff like that. So it uses that instead. And every time you make a request, you get to choose which model you're using. Cursor is that it is paid, but I mean, I can't like, I'll cancel my Copilot subscription and use Cursor instead. And then it's like sort of, <laughs> sort of makes up for it. So yeah, if Cursor were to cease existing right now, my life as a developer, would be greatly impacted just because I've gotten so used to using it. So for that reason, I'm putting it at S tier, probably more than VO, but less than perplexity because I use perplexity for so much like life related stuff. Next, we have Gemini. Now, I don't know if anyone has actually tested Gemini. From what I understand, there is like nothing you would rather use Gemini for than anything else. I have tested it like a handful of times and it is just nothing special. Um, if like I forgot Gemini even existed until someone in chat reminded me to add it to the list. I was really Really excited about like Google's whole like AI stuff when they announced Bard and then I realized Bard wasn't available in Canada and I forgot about it. That's kind of crazy that Google's like Google, the search engine, the thing that's like the domain of the web isn't able to like search for like websites. Like when I asked Perplexity and GPT, it's able to do this. I don't know anyone that actually uses Gemini. I certainly don't. And I think like, I don't want to say F tier because F tier means it doesn't even work. I'd say it's like C tier. B tier is like the things that are cool to have and I might use every now and then. C tier is like, if this ceased to exist, I would like not even remember that it was a thing in the first place. I'd be like, Gemini, Gemini. Oh yeah, that was Google's AI, right? Speaking of which, Meta AI. Meta has some pretty good models if you are just using the models. And I think you could just chat with the models as well. I don't know exactly how it compares to GPT, but I'm willing to bet it's like pretty similar. The thing that is cool about Meta's AI things is that you can download them and host them locally. So if you use, I think a tool called Olama, for example, you can just download this and run like some of the Meta models. So because they're quote, open source and like open to the public and a bit more like transparent than open AI. I think it has more utility. However, I don't find myself using it. And if you use the integration in like WhatsApp or Instagram or Facebook, it's pretty fucking garbage. They also did this really weird stuff a couple of months back where they released like AI chatbots for celebrities. And I remember trying it out and it was like absolutely horrible. Um, so yeah, I guess if you just ignore this part and focus on the pack, fact that they're like helping people run like local LLMs and stuff like that, I guess it's pretty good. But on a day-to-day -day basis, I don't use it. It would be sad though if they were gone. So I'm going to put meta stuff at A tier just because of the utility. Now mid journey. Mid journey is like the thing that revolutionized image stuff. It was like the thing that went mainstream for being able to generate images before a lot of people knew about stable diffusion and, you know, chat GP and stuff like that integrated. I personally was like the biggest fan of mid journey. I thought it was the most life changing thing. And then the quality just like got worse. You have to use it through discord. So it's not as like easy to use and stuff like that. I do like that. You can see all the people's like everything people have released and stuff like that and sort of search through images. That is a nice use. However, I do not use it on a daily basis. If I was generating AI images that were sort of more broad and general on a daily basis. I probably would use mid journey just because I can like, instead of using my own credits, I can be like, Oh, let's see if anyone else has generated like a coloring book of a squirrel, get their images instead. So I like it for that. However, like there's no way I'm like going to mid journey and paying for mid journey specifically when I could just pay for chat GPT and get like pretty much the same Im image stuff. Unless you're like really image maxing and using it to like the fullest extent mid journey probably isn't worth it, but it's still quite good. So I'm going to put this as, an A tier as well. It's like sort of situational. The same way I wouldn't be using cursor or VO if I wasn't coding every day, I'm not going to use mid journey if I'm not hardcore generating images every day. Lastly, we have the opening eye models. Oh, one, I'm putting at high A tier and I'm putting GPT-4 at high A tier. I think both of them are good for different things. Oh, one, 
seems a lot better for programming and actual things that require thinking and flow. It sort of starts to approach the perplexity level. Um, and GPT-D4 is just an all around like great driver for like LLM. So like whenever I need to do like chat about video ideas or maybe like title ideas or naming ideas or uh, like prompts for other AIs and stuff like that, my go-to is GPT-4. Quick, reliable, fast, hallucinates. So that's why I use perplexity to ask it for any real questions or anything that requires any actual real knowledge, but I would not use it, uh, you know, for any of that stuff. But if it were to disappear, I would be sad. And for that, it's high A tier. Now, in terms of S tier ordering, we have perplexity, cursor, and VO. I think the ordering here is fine. Perplexity is probably the one that impacts my daily life the most. It's what I get like a lot of medical fitness advice from. The LLM I can trust the most, so I'd highly, highly prefer to have that in my life. Cursor secondary, just because it changes how I code on a daily basis as well. But honestly, we coded years and years without AI. We can live without it. I think health information and general information about the world and research and stuff like that is probably more impactful for more people uh, in a broad sense. So I think perplexity stays S tier. And no, I'm not sponsored by any of these companies. This is my opinion from using some of these for more than a year. So 